जय राधा माधवा कुंज विहारे जय कार्तिक व्रत 2015 की ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम अज्ञान तिमिरांधस्य ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुर उन मिलितम् ये नतस्माइ श्री गुरवे नमः श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासदी गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 सो वेलकम टू दिस कंक्लूडिंग सेशन ऑफ दिस कार्तिक सेमिनार ऑन द वंडरफुल ट्रांसेंडेंटल ग्लोरीज ऑफ मदर यशोदा's लव इन बाइंडिंग द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड इट श्री कृष्ण दिस पास्ट टाइम व्हिच इज सेलिब्रेटेड एज यशोदा दामोदर लीला इट इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एज दाम बंधन लीला दाम मींस रोप and bandhan means to bind. So that leela or that pastime where the Supreme Lord is bound by ropes is Dham Bandhan Leela. This pastime is also called as Ukhal Bandhan Leela because Ukhal means the wooden grinding motor. So Ukhal Bandhan Leela means that pastime where the Supreme Lord is bound with ropes of course but with the wooden grinding motor around his belly. So, <clears throat> since this is the concluding session, we'll have a quick 
overview and I'll be very happy if those who have attended the seminar till now start shooting some point that they remember, some point that they can uh, take home, something that they uh, really uh, imbibed from this narration that Shukadev Goswami is saying. So maybe a minute if somebody wants to express some point that you remember from this past time. Yes, Mataji? There are many points coming up, I guess. The most and important point uh -huh. for myself was the two fingers too short. Okay. Which is not only a source of uh, comic uh, you know, uh, vision of the situation <laughs> of Mother Yashoda being confused and angry and loving all at the same time and uh, all the Rijabhasis becoming involved in trying to gather enough rope to bind Krishna's belly which somehow inexpressibly, um, uh, indescribably cannot be bound but no matter how much rope uh, Krishna finally allows uh, Mother Yashoda through her love to right. bind him uh, with the two fingers representing one is Mother Yashoda's, Yashoda's determination mm -hmm. her one-pointedness right. unswerving uh, uh, uninterrupted right. um, unalloyed love <laughs> to keep her Krishna safe and near and under her control and then, of course, the other finger would be Krishna uh, saying, I surrender to you. Right. So, and then he becomes bound, which, of course, allows him to complete his further pastime, mm -hmm. which goes into something else. Mm -hmm. So, it, it all surprisingly makes sense in the end. Right. Yeah. Right. Since, interestingly, you said this point, let's start today's discussion with this point. Right? Let's take this further. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Shukadev Goswami says, Drishtva Sva Matu Parishramam. What did Krishna see? Drishtva means saw or seeing. What is Krishna seeing? Parishramam. Shrama means labor, effort, your endeavor. And pari, the prefix pari means Parita shramam, too much of effort, so determined, one pointed endeavor. Pari shramam. We know this word shrama because we say ashrama. He is Brahmachari ashram. He is in the grihast ashram. Which means when we think of ashram, the first point that comes to our head is that a small hut, right? or a sage is sitting inside, or some devotees are sitting inside. But what is ashram? Shrama, as we discussed, is labor or effort. Ashram means that place where continuously you endeavor. Ashram. So here, Mother Yashoda is doing parishram, one-pointed endeavor. Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, Vyavasayatmika buddhir, Ekeha Kuru Nandana Bahu Shakhayanantascha Buddha Yogya Vasayana. O Arjuna, be resolute in purpose. Be one pointed. Don't be multi branched. So, what was the focus for Mother Yashoda? One pointed. I have to bind my child. That's all. And when Krishna saw that Drishtva Parishramam, who's Parishramam? Sva Matuhu. Matu means mother. Shukadev Goswami doesn't say Mother Yashoda. Krishna saw mother putting in effort. Swa matuhu, his own mother endeavoring. Swa or his own signifies Krishna's feeling of compassion. I am making my own mother struggle. I am making my own mother work like this. And the description given as Mother Yashoda was like completely drenched with sweat. Swinnam vaktram, that face which was like a moon was now filled with spots of sweat. And the, the hair, the, the, the flowers from the hair were falling down because she, her, she was getting tired. With her hands she was trying to bind and then 
It's not happening. She's repeatedly trying and she's sweating. And initially, Krishna's energies weren't allowing Mother Yashoda to bind him. Parasya shaktir vividhaiva shroyate. Krishna has so many inconceivable energies. Nityo nityanam chetanas chetananam eko bahunam yovida dhati kaman. His Sandhini Shakti, His Ladhini Shakti, His Leela Shakti, His Dham Shakti, His Samvit Sandhini, Ladhini, all the Shakti is coming together. Inconceivable, in fact, to even explain each Shakti. And they all started coming and standing ahead. We, origin, we, we originate from Krishna. We serve Krishna. And you are trying to bind our Supreme Lord? That's not possible. It's not that the rope was short. The rope was so long, according to the Acharyas, that it can bind Krishna multiple times. But the energy started coming and standing ahead, because of which the rope was never meeting end to end. And when all these philosophical energy started coming up and stopping Mother Yashoda from binding Krishna, Krishna was looking at all this with a smile. Now he was like the Supreme Personality with all his energies, with all his shaktis, and seeing how the devotee is, to what extent the devotee can go. Krishna is testing his own mother. We are fragments. And we still say, I'm chanting Hare Krishna for five years and I'm still not getting bhakti. We are fragments. Krishna is testing his own mother. Swa matuhu. And when the Leela Shakti started coming ahead, Tattva Shakti, Rupa Shakti, they were all coming ahead and standing in front of Sri Krishna and finally in front of all these Shaktis, there was one Shakti which just started rising in Krishna's heart, which is called as Kripa Shakti or the energy or the feeling of unlimited compassion. Krishna started feeling Drishtva Swamatu Parishramam. I'm my mother is endeavoring so hard just to bind me. All your energies leave. And the, when Kripa Shakti, like when the sun rises, all the darkness is lost. Similarly, when Krishna's compassion rises, all other Shaktis make way. And when that Shakti of Shri Kripa, of Shri Krishna, of Kripa, which is mercy or compassion, started rising, all the energies went away, and that Supreme Personality, who can never be bound in past, present, and future, was bound simply by the ropes of Mother Yashoda. Very interesting pastime. Very, very interesting. That Krishna, who's called as Atma Ram. Atma Ram means he who has no need. He is always self-satisfied. In fact, he provides and fulfills the needs of all of us. And that personality desired to drink his mother's milk. Interesting. He says, from me comes everything, from me comes everything. The universe has come out from his plenary portion, Mahavishnu, simply by breathing. And that origin of all these expansions desires to drink milk. He's Atma Ram. He provides milk to this material world. And he developed this desire of drinking his mother's milk. Why? Was it something special with the milk? No. It wasn't the milk of this world. It is not the milk which Krishna is interested in. He is interested in the motherly love mixed in that milk. If we come in front of the deities and we offer Chappanbog, Right? The different opulent, Rajbog, very wonderfully made and very wonderfully decorated and golden and silver plates. But there's no heart. Do you think Krishna is going to accept all that? Impossible. Lakshmi Sahasra Shata Sambrahma Sevyamanam Govindam Adipurusham Tamaham Bhajami. He has been served by millions and millions of Lakshmis, goddess of fortune. Why would he leave that planet and come and eat your rasgulla? He will come only when that rasgulla is mixed with your bhav. Because in that rasgulla which he comes to taste, he's coming and picking up the rasgulla and he tastes not just the sweetness of the rasgulla, but the sweetness of the heartfelt devotion of that devotee offering. So this Krishna, who's so thirsty and so hungry for love, 
Repeatedly he states in all the scriptures, I'm conquered only by love, I'm conquered only by love, I'm conquered only by love. Bhaktyamam abhijanati yavan yaschasmi tattvata. 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. It's only by bhakti, O Arjuna, please understand that you can conquer me. No other process. No other process. So this personality who provides and fulfills all the needs of everyone is needy and greedy. And he wants milk. Interesting. That is first aspect. Second point. When he is given that milk and he is left on the floor, that Lord who is always satisfied now becomes unsatisfied. Okay, you wanted milk, we gave you. But you are always satisfied, isn't it? Krishna is always satisfied. But when he was not given sufficient milk, he wants more. Atripta. He is unsatisfied. Moreover, he who is on a transcendental plane, who is never touched by the three modes of material nature, gets angry. And he rubs his feet and punches his hand on the ground. Anger is considered to be the mode of passion. And it is described simply by hearing about Krishna, you become free from the lower modes. And you become transcendental. And that transcendental personality is getting angry. So first, karma or desire to drink milk. Second, lobha or greed that I want more milk. Third, krodha that why was I left down? So all the anarthas Krishna is displaying. <laughs> but very interesting point, these are not material qualities. That personality who is beyond all this is ready to possess all these qualities only for one purpose because of the reciprocation of love. That's all. Then he who cannot be caught even by the mind of the greatest yogis. Great sages, in summer they sit with eight fires around them. And in winter they stand neck deep in you know, freezing water. And such people have strong senses and strong one-pointed focus. And even by that mind you can catch Krishna. And that Krishna who cannot be caught by the chariot of our mind is caught by running by a... A gopi in Vrindavan? <laughs> Very fascinating. And then when he is running, he, he whom <clears throat> even f death fears, he whom even death fears, he is running and he is afraid. And then he is afraid, not just afraid, he is crying. If you remember Krishna, he will make you so happy that you will never again cry in pain. But here, that personality is crying. And then finally, he is caught. And he who is Nitya Ananda, always in bliss, he is suffering in distress. And then he cannot be bound, but he is bound. And then when he is bound, he is miserable. So in this way, Krishna is representing one quality according to Shukadeva Goswami. Then this quality in Sanskrit is called as Vritya Vashyata. Vritya means servant or pure devotee. And Vashyata means to be conquered. So Vritya Vashyata is that quality of Sri Krishna where he is conquered and subdued completely by the love of his pure devotee. But the Acharyas explain, there's a distinction. Draupadi was a pure devotee. She called out to Krishna. Krishna came, helped her, and was completely un under her control. But what was the mood of Krishna in dealing with Draupadi? He was protecting her. He was completely under her control, and therefore he was protecting her. Pralhad, pure devotee. Narsinga completely under the protection, under the <coughs> control of Pralhad. But what was the mood? He came to protect. Gajendra, the elephant, was crying out in, hell, uh, in, in distress. And to help the Supreme Lord came, because Gajendra was a pure devotee. But again, what was the mood? He came to protect. But it is only for pure devotees like Mother Yashoda, 
where he's conquered and so conquered that he doesn't come to protect, but he cries for protection. Very, very inconceivable. Isn't it? Wonderful. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur writes, he who is Mukunda, Krishna is called Mukunda. What does Mukunda mean? One who gives liberation, the giver of liberation. And Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur writes, He who is Mukunda, the giver of liberation, is crying to get liberated here. <laughs> in fact, in the past time, when the fruit vendor came to Vrindavan, and baby Krishna started walking with some grains in his hand, and he was such a small baby that all the, the grains, the rice grains and the other grains, started slipping between his fingers. And when he carried, there was nothing present in his mouth. He was just carrying. Baby is just walking, he put his hand the way Mother Yeshoda did always. And he heard this sound, put his hand, started walking. Therefore, there in that past time, Shukadeva Goswami calls Krishna not as Krishna, not as Hari, but he calls him as Achyuta. Achyuta means he who never falls from his position. And Shukadeva Goswami sees, says, this is the wonder in Vrindavan, that he who never falls from his position, from his hand, rice is falling. He who never leaves his position, he's always God. Achyuta. Chuta means to fall. And Achyuta, he who never falls from his position. And look at the love of the Vrajavasis. From that personality's hand, the grain is falling. And when Krishna came, in fact, with that fruit vendor, he came to beg for fruits, right? So Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur states there, he who's falapradata, he who gives every jiva the fruit of his activities is coming and begging for fruits himself. <laughs> this is the glory of Vrindavan. Only, only and only in Vrindavan is the Supreme Lord conquered to such an extent that he completely forgets he's God. The Vrajavasis, the residents in Vrindavan forget he is Krishna. Krishna himself forgets he is Krishna. But sometimes the Vrajavasis are reminded. Like in the past time, Nanda Maharaj, he <clears throat> had to break the Ekadashi fast. See, he went into the holy river. You know this fast time, very nice fast time. See, he, he had to break his fast, so he went to take a bath uh, in the holy river. And because it was an inauspicious time, he was arrested by Yamadutas. And he was taken to the kingdom of Varuna, who is the king of water. So when he was taken to the kingdom of Varuna, there Varun Dev welcomed Nanda Maharaj. Oh, he's, he's Krishna's father. He gave him the, the seat and everybody started glorifying Shri Krishna. So Nanda Maharaj started thinking, why are they glorifying my child like this? Is he really God? They were saying, you're Krishna's father. Your son is the supreme personality of God. And Nanda Maharaj is thinking, Supreme Personality of Godhead and he runs naked in my house. <laughs> Supreme Personality of Godhead and he steals and he lies and he eats mud and cries and can't even, when he's on his back, he can't even roll over onto the other side. That Supreme Personality. And he came, Krishna in fact, that's a very brilliant past time, Krishna comes and takes him back. And when Nanda Maharaj comes here, Nanda Maharaj narrates to all the residents in Vrindavan. Did you know what happened there? They were all saying that Krishna is God. And the citizens in Vrindavan, the residents in Vrindavan started saying that, Oh, if Varuna's kingdom was so opulent, and if he glorifies Krishna to be God, how opulent and how majestic Krishna's kingdom would be. Krishna, can you show us your palace? And then Krishna takes them into this quick illusion where they go and they actually witness Krishna's palace and his majesty. And then when Krishna sees that, oh, they're just appreciative. And then in split second, that majesty is broken. And back to square, when, square one, where the Vrajavasis start scolding and chastising Krishna. It's very interesting. Very, very interesting. The famous painting, Michelangelo, God's hand with a child, where man's Adam. So in that painting, if you see, it's, it's, the, the representation is God is the protector and we are trying to approach him. But here, that same personality is seeking protection. 
Why? Is, is Krishna aware that he is God and is he acting? Or he is seriously not aware? And if he is omniscient and he knows everything, how is it that he is not aware? Inconceivable. This is what pure love can do. Pure love can completely even cast a spell over the supreme personality of Godhead. He who knows everything past, present and future, he claims in the Bhagavad Gita. Vedaham samatitani vartamanani charjuna bhavishyani cha bhutani maam tu vedana kaschana O Arjuna, I know the past, present and future of every living entity. I know everything but they don't know me. And this personality forgets he is God. Because this whole land of Vrindavan, where even the birds, even the trees, even the cows, the calves, the gopas, the gopis, they all have just one aim. That is to love Krishna selflessly. He is the center of their lives. It is described in the Bhagavatam that every mother in Vrindavan loved Krishna more than her own child. How is this possible? Not possible in this material world, but in Vrindavan that is the speciality. Krishna is the center. And he is controlled by love and the devotees are controlled by love. Both move in love. The devotees do what pleases Krishna and Krishna does what pleases the devotees. So as Prabhu started this discussion, very important. The two fingers which were always falling, the rope was falling two fingers short, they are very significant. Our endeavor with this attempt to bind Krishna in the core of our heart and Krishna's mercy and compassion and his agreement, okay, you bind me. Very important. If we don't endeavor, Krishna will never shower his mercy. Sometimes when we speak to people and we say, why don't you chant and why don't you become a devotee? Especially in India, you will, find, you will hear excuses like, oh, when Krishna showers his mercy, I will become devotee. Krishna will not shower his mercy till the time you don't become, you don't endeavor. When a devotee showers his mercy, your path of bhakti begins. But only when your path of bhakti begins, will Krishna shower his mercy. We have to endeavor. If we don't sweat for Krishna, Krishna will never shower his mercy. It is not, in fact, they blame in such a way that I am doing my best, but he is not showering his mercy, therefore I am not chanting Hare Krishna. His mercy is there. We have to endeavor. We have to endeavor. Worshipping the deities, reading the scriptures, chanting the holy name, Japa, Kirtan, associating with Vaishnavas. Very important. Even if we have no taste, we still must endeavor. Prabhupada, when he was asked, what do we do when we don't feel enthusiasm? Prabhupada said, act as if you are enthusiastic. And in this endeavor, you will become enthusiastic. You might not like to chant Japa, but this process of chanting Japa pleases Krishna. And because we have to please Krishna, we chant Japa. So in this way, the two fingers met and Krishna was bound. And now in this bound state, Krishna, who was there in this bound to this wooden grinding motor, looked so beautiful. Shukadev Goswami, in fact, describes Krishna at that instant as Hari. Oh, Maharaj Parikshit, if you actually see Krishna at this instant, bound by that rope around his belly with this wooden grinding motor, that form will steal your heart away. Hari means he who steals your heart away. In that verse, he calls Krishna not as Krishna, not as Damodar, not as Keshava, but as Hari. You will lose your heart. Your mind will just fly to his lotus feet, oh Maharaj Parikshit. And where did Mother Yashoda tie the rope? To the belly. Our Acharyas describe when you, when you catch hold of offenders or criminals, where do you tie them? Their hands or legs, right? If they are too much of an offender, around the neck. <laughs> but Krishna was bound around the belly because Mother Yashoda was signifying that he who is the Supreme Lord who showed me the universal creation in his mouth, which means the universe is there in his belly. He can keep his belly, he can keep the universe in his belly, but I can actually conquer him. You might call him God because he shows all the mystic scenes in his mouth, 
but by by my love i can bind him he who binds the whole universe in his belly inside his stomach was bound by madhuri ashoda inconceivable inconceivable all the past times of shri krishna julan he is sitting right the boat festival he is sitting with the gopis and the the um, other associates but in damodar so sweet mother yashoda is staying with with the mood of punishing krishna and krishna is being bound with his mood of i'm really sorry and if we are punished at any point would we make it public we would keep it as private as possible right because we we are ashamed we don't want to show the world that we were punished but here is krishna coming ahead and showing to the whole creation look i am bound he is advertising himself that instead of approaching me as the supreme personality of god and please approach me in the footsteps of mother yashoda please bind me like this he himself is marketing and he is advertising i like to be bound with the ropes of love please bind me like mother yashoda is doing she is called as yashoda da means giver and yasha means fame she who is capable enough to give fame to the all famous krishna is yashoda nand maharaj his name is nanda nanda means bliss happiness he is the reservoir of pleasure but it is described when nanda got krishna his happiness grew no bounds he whose name is nanda became ananda became happy so krishna was very special to nanda and yashoda and nanda maharaj was out during this past time he will come very soon so he is bound and now krishna ventures into his part 2 past time and he starts crawling because he sees that these two trees in his courtyard are stuck in tree bodies he remembers the past time of mani griva and nala kuvera where these two trees were previously actually sons of kuvera and then he goes to deliver them shri pad sanatan goswami writes look at krishna's compassion he himself is bound but he is going to liberate the trees he is not thinking that once i am liberated once the 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 ropes are removed then i'll go and liberate he says why wait till then i might be bound but i don't have to keep them bound krishna explains in bhagavad gita suridam sarva bhutanam nyatva mam shanti mrichati i am your ever well wishing friend who can be a better well wisher than that he himself is struggling as a baby he is bound and still he is crawling all the way with the weight of the wooden grinding motor why only to liberate two jeevas out of their tree body they are called as yamala arjuna trees yamala or yugala means two and arjuna is the is the uh, name of that the class of trees so krishna is thinking according to another acharya that these trees are arjuna trees and in the future i'm going to have a friend by the name arjuna who is liberated then how can they have the same name and still be bound therefore i have to go and liberate them inconceivable how these two personalities were intoxicated sons of kubera and they were elevated to have the association of lord shiva why won't they get proud <laughs> in the material sense they had all the opulence money because they were son of kubera and kubera is such a big treasurer that even greats great great demigods not people like us great great demigods go and beg for loans from kubera and mani griva and nala kubera were very handsome materially speaking very exquisite features and son of sons of kubera and they were learned and they were elevated to have the association of lord shiva they were bathing in mandakini river mandakini river is the same as ganga the same river ganga flows in the upper planetary systems middle planetary systems and lower planetary systems in the upper planetary systems this this river ganga is called as mandakini in the middle planetary systems or earth it's called as ganga or janavi or also called as uh, <coughs> bhagavati or bhagirathi 
and in the lower planetary system the same river is called as bhogavati so they were bathing in the ganges or mandakini river and how were they bathing they were bathing naked with women of that area or the, the surrounding can you imagine how mad they could be in illusion total madness when you have so much of material opulence that you even lose the equilibrium of intelligence they were in the dham they were bathing in the sacred river they were with women and they were among exalted personalities and naked and their their mindset was so what who cares our father is kubera we don't have to the the moral etiquette rules and of conduct are not meant for us we can behave the way we want so when narad muni came there who is such a great soul wherever people are fallen he will go there bhavatvida bhagavata tirtha bhuta swayam vibha tirthi kurvanti tirthani swantaste nagadaprita the bhagavatam says great souls are such that they travel from one place to another not for their profit or their gain but simply to uplift those in that area tirtha bhuta swayam vibho they themselves are places of pilgrimage because krishna is staying in their heart and their body is like dham they are so powerful that they can make the dham into a greater dham by their presence so this narad muni approached and he saw the women were little uh, taken aback with the presence of narad muni so they did the need for but these two sons were like why is he here why should he come and interfere in our enjoyment they weren't thinking that oh he is here and we have to behave properly in fact still their pride and their madness was so high that they didn't care let me see what this guy can do we don't have to we don't have to do anything these girls are all scared we don't have to do anything let me see what he can do and narad muni of course has a long conversation but the essence being narad muni cursed them to be trees because they were acting naked as you sow so shall you reap there are so many bodies in this material creation and depending on how you behave krishna rewards you accordingly so narad muni felt oh you like to stand like this well then you are perfect fit to be trees but because he is a great soul look at his mercy those who are in kailash those who are still in the material heavenly kingdom were given entrance as trees in the courtyard of nanda maharaj in the holy land of vrindavan that same vrindavan where brahma aspires to even turn as a rock a hill you know that story of brahma performing 60000 years of penance and when shrimati radharani appeared before him he said shrimati radharani my only desire i am having these four heads but they are useless let these four heads even become hills but in such a way that i can daily bathe in the dust of your lotus feet and the four heads of brahma became the four hills in barasana the birthplace of shrimati radharani lord shiva aspires to be a hill and he becomes nandishwar hill in nandagram where krishna had his childhood pastimes narad muni dips in kusum sarovar and becomes nardi gopi uddhava aspires to be a blade of grass gulmala taushadha aushadhi he aspires to be a blade of grass only so that he can get the dust of the lotus feet of the vrajavasis and the gopis on his head this is the this is the power potency of this land of vrindavan and in that place out of his mercy narad muni says may you become trees in the courtyard of nanda maharaj when you have katha and when you have kirtan many times people just stand up and leave right but if you're trees you can't even leave you can't even leave trees don't move they can't walk so they were they became these two trees 
And in fact, they were so fortunate. Krishna many times played hide and seek with them, with the friends. And he used to hide behind these trees. And sometimes embrace these trees. What good fortune. Is this a curse or is this a blessing? And then finally, he moved, he started crawling and he started walking and the wooden grinding motor started rolling and finally it got stuck and that was the reason for liberation of these trees. One of the Acharyas write, what was the qualification of this wooden grinding motor? It liberated the trees, mind you. Krishna just pulled, but it was the wooden grinding motor which uprooted the trees and liberated the trees. What was the qualification of this wooden grinding motor? Just one. It followed behind Krishna selflessly. <laughs> Krishna was crawling and the wooden grinding motor was rolling without a second thought. So the Acharyas say, if we can simply follow the footsteps of Sri Krishna and his devotees, we become empowered to liberate even trees. Very interesting, isn't it? The wooden grinding motor could liberate the trees because it started rolling behind Krishna and following his footsteps, one pointed. Mahajano yena gata sapantha. Prabhupada made this point. When we can follow the footsteps of the predecessor Acharyas and follow the words of Sri Krishna, we become empowered and we can liberate. We get liberated and we can liberate others. So in this way, the trees were uprooted. These two divine personalities came up. They offered prayers to Sri Krishna, circumambulated Sri Krishna. They circumambulated Sri Krishna and immediately left. What the Brajavasis heard was just a, a big sound. And the trees were uprooted and, oh my God, what happened? And everybody rushed to the scene. And Mother Yashoda fainted, thinking that, oh, maybe Krishna got crushed under the trees. So she never came there. So all the Brajavasis came and they saw Krishna fearlessly playing in the middle of those two trees. He was afraid some moments ago. And now he's fearlessly playing as if he doesn't know anything. He's just an innocent child laughing and giggling between these trees. And the Brajavasis asked some boys there, can you tell me what happened? And the boys said, you know what happened? Uh, the Krishna actually went crawling and the wooden grinding motor got stuck between the trees and Krishna pulled and the wooden grinding motor was against the trees. The trees got uprooted, they fell down and, and uh, Krishna is in the middle. You know how children narrate breathlessly when they see something very fascinating. And the Brajavas is, ah, these kids are, they hear some fairy tale stories and they just make it up. The same thing happened when Krishna kicked the chariot. Uh, the, the cart, Shaka, Shakat Banjan Leela. Krishna kicked the cart, everything toppled, everything fell. And then Brajavasis came and asked the boys, what happened? Did you see? Yes, we saw Krishna actually kicked the, uh, the cart and everything toppled and uh, he was the one who kicked. And the elderly Brajavasis, eh, these kids make it up. They were speaking the truth. <laughs> So the Brajavasi said, and of course they didn't accept. And finally, uh, they said, okay, whatever may be the reason, one thing we can say for sure, by the unlimited causeless blessings and mercy of Lord Narayan, Sri Krishna was saved. And at this point, Nanda Maharaj comes in and he looks and Krishna is still not untied. So he's still bound and he's moving around with that. A uh, wooden grinding motor and that rope and it is stuck somewhere midway. <laughs> so very sweet, cute little Kopal. And Nanda Maharaj comes and opens it up and Krishna jumps onto his arms. And then Nanda Maharaj asks Krishna and Krishna starts crying and he points towards his mother, according to the Acharyas. And then his mother comes and picks up Gopal, Shri Krishna, and starts feeding him. And Krishna is mentally thinking, according to Srila Sanatan Goswami, that Yes. Krishna is mentally thinking, after all this past time, you're feeding me milk. This is exactly what you should have done then. If you had just fed me more milk like you're doing now then, then I, there was no need of all this drama. This is exactly what I was looking for. So you had all this done and then you're feeding me better late than never. And then Krishna started drinking the milk and 
he was satisfied, Mother Yashoda was satisfied, the Brajavasis were satisfied. And that evening they had a meeting, they had an Easter Ghosti to decide what went wrong and what could be fixed. And Upa Nanda Maharaj, who's Nanda Maharaj's brother, he discussed and he said, this place is becoming very dangerous for Shri Krishna because Putana came in, Shakatasur came in, Trinavarta came in and God knows what evil spirit came now, the trees fell down. Some ghost came in. They don't know the reason is this black ghost. <laughs> this bluish black ghost. He's the one who did everything. <laughs> but they still think, oh, there was some external reason. Our Sri Krishna, he was the one. He kicked the chariot, uh, the cart. He, he uprooted the trees. He smothered Trinavarta. He sucked the life air out of Putana. He's the one. Sarva Karana Karana. But the love of the Brajavasis is so deep. They can never accept that Sri Krishna is God. Because he is our sweetheart in Vrindavan. That evening they discussed that, oh, well, this place is very risky. We have to leave this place and go. And the very next day, all the Brajavasis, they collected all their items. And from Gokul Mahavan, they went to Vrindavan. Then the description goes of the Acharyas. They write how Krishna and Balram, when they entered Vrindavan and they saw Govardhan Hill for the first time, they were fascinated. Wow, this is so beautiful. And as we know, they continued staying there and connecting that story to Krishna meeting Govardhan is what would be the topic of our discussion next week. Of course, I won't be here, but the occasion is the lifting of Govardhan Hill. And uh, so after Krishna came to Vrindavan, there were unlimited pastimes that this personality performed. So therefore, in the Damodarashtaka also, we must understand every stanza what we sing. And most importantly, the last line of the last paragraph says, Namo Radhikaya Twadiya Priyaya Namo Ananta Leelaya Devaya Tubhyam. I bow down to Srimati Radharani, who is the greatest devotee, who is very close to you, O Sri Krishna, and I bow down to you, who performs unlimited pastimes. So on that note, I thank you very much for being part of this wonderful narration by Srila Shukadev Goswami. Sometimes when we are discussing, it's as good as Shukadev Goswami showing us a movie. Step by step, we are literally able to see. And um, this is inconceivable mercy. Sometimes people say that, can we see God? Well, yes, you can see God through your ears. Simply by hearing these narrations step by step, Srila Shukadev Goswami is uh, revealing all these wonderful pastimes. So let's stop and uh, let's pray that we also get a fragment of the unlimited love that Mother Yashoda possesses for Sri Krishna. Shri Shri Radha Damodar Ki Jai. Shri La Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bhum.